All right, what's up, YouTube? So we got a video from VidIQ today. How Sam Solek is changing YouTube. That's the title of the, the video. Thumbnail of the video was no thumbnails, no editing. And I'm like, hmm, I, I feel like other people have done this before, and this is not like anything new. But, you know, VidIQ has a lot of good information about videos and stuff like that. So in like an algorithm and YouTube and content creation. So I thought I would watch this video. It's only six minutes long and uh, see what I have any have to say about it or if it's anything very helpful. So let's take a look at the video and see what uh, VidIQ has to say. Making gains, man. That's what we're all here for. This is Sam Sulek. He's a 21-year-old bodybuilder, and he's getting those gains in more ways than one. In March of this year, he had around 8,000 subscribers, and today he's sitting at a ridiculous 1.8 million. Okay, hold on. That's not right. It was right when I filmed that. But now, two days later, I'm editing, and he's at 1.9 million. So he gained like 100,000 subscribers in two days. His okay. That's not... That's not so surprising, right? Like, I feel like that's not very surprising. If somebody is on that much of an uh, uptick, right, where they're already past a million, whatever you're doing, you keep doing it, you keep posting, you got a lot of people, you got a lot of people that are already watching your stuff, right? You got a lot of people that are already, you know, hitting your, you're clicking on your videos and your click-through rate has to be pretty good it's sending it out to more and more people. Um, why people might click on his thumbnails. Now, I don't know what his thumbnails look like yet, right? But if he's not, you, you know, doing any specific thumbnails or anything like that, then he's probably just, you know, uploading the video and then clicking on whatever, whichever one of the three, you know, I like, like thumbnails that they give you, or he just doesn't even bother picking one and just, you know, goes with whatever one that they, they, they put, you know, on the video first. Um, he's, 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 look, he's a huge, he's a huge dude. Look at, look at this down here. He's a huge dude. He, he, like that has to, that has to count for something in the thumbnail. Right. Um, and then also people that are watching, trying to learn something from him, like about like how he's making these gains and it's probably very relatable because it's not like super edited in like super high quality or anything like that. I'm just making assumptions. I don't know yet. So let's let's keep going. Growth has been so rapid and exponential that over one million of those actually subscribed in the past two months. So what makes Sam so special? Is it because he's freaking huge? Partly. No. Well, Partly. Is, but Partly. Not the reason. Partly. Partly. Sam's channel and you start looking through his content. The you cannot. You can't ignore that. Right. Because like that's part of the reason why people click on his videos. Like if that's part of the reason why, like it's not it, if he was a, if he was a skinny dude and he was doing the same thing. Could it could he possibly pop off? Maybe. Would he would he pop off as fast as he did? Maybe not. Like in there, there's plenty of other dudes that are like super huge, but they're not maybe not doing the exact same thing he's doing. But it's part of the reason. Like I, I, I can't, I can't let it be said that no, nah, that's that has nothing to do with why he's he's so he, you know he's he's growing so fast. But it's 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 a factor. It's it's one of the key factors. First thing you'll notice is oh, his thumbnails are just screen caps from his videos. But look at his thumbnail. Like look look at look at his thumbnails. Dude, like you did I not did I not say earlier that like his thumbnails have to be something that that is uh probably has to do with how big he is and how like muscular he is, right? Like if he was just some random skinny dude, those thumbnails wouldn't be like super clickable. Even though they're not like some super edited thumbnail, it's still a clickable thumbnail because he's not like his size and his like look the dude's legs look at this dude's legs look at his arms look at this and then it's like then you got this one here where he's just kind of sitting here 
Look at his back. Look at look at him. Look when he flexes. Like that's it. YouTube's picking like probably something that's like uh like looks thumbnailable. If you play a lot of video games and there's a uh a super bright flash of light with like big words in the center of the screen or um uh what else um like something that has like a face right in the middle of the screen is making a really like weird face um or like it's uh a full screen shot of you like that's that's what seem that's what YouTube seems to gravitate towards when they pick the three thumbnails for you to you know choose I wish that they would give you the option like even though even though some people like well most of us we we all just make our own thumbnail but they should literally just let us click the thing and then have and then slide and scrub through the video and pick a thumbnail they do that in like Instagram and some other uh Maybe not. Oh, and yeah, it, it works in uh in TikTok too. TikTok and Instagram lets you do that. They should allow you to do that on YouTube. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not past a certain amount of like time or whatever. Like maybe they pick like the first, I don't know, 20 minutes of the video that you can scrub through and pick a thumbnail from or something like that. Um, Something, I don't know, but they, I feel like they should have that option there. But I guess since people make their own thumbnails and everybody makes these highly customized thumbnails, they're like, we'll just give them three to pick from. And then, you know, if they want to make their own, they can make their own. You know what I mean? The next thing you'll notice is every single one of these videos is over 30 minutes and some are even over an hour and that view count. <laughs> <laughs> this, this still is crazy. So what's the deal? Is the production value okay? Let's talk about let's talk about uh uh like views for like long videos, right? Now I I noticed that um one time Linus uh for Linus Tech Tips said that he doesn't know why people will watch him put together a computer for so long and not you know the other videos that they do the other like like edited highly edited videos or whatever, but he'll do a stream of like. Um, him, you know, putting the computer together and that will get a lot of views as somebody who watches YouTube a lot and, you know, frequents his, you know, videos. Um, a lot of times the videos of him building a computer, I'm, I never click on them. I never click on them. I'm, I never go, I never click on those videos and I also never click on the WAN show. I have never clicked on the WAN show, never clicked on uh, his computer uh, building streams, but they always show up. So I let, I let YouTube autoplay all the time. And I'm sure that a lot of other people just let YouTube autoplay all the time. So like you might be sitting there doing whatever you got, you know, YouTube on your other monitor or whatever in, or you've got YouTube on the TV while you're doing whatever else, you know, uh, on your computer, whatever. Right. And you let, you know, uh, YouTube autoplay. YouTube will, or at least it seems like to me, YouTube will start to pull long videos or podcast style videos um, and autoplay them right after certain, you know, things that you watch. Like if I'm watching a bunch of stuff about Valorant, this used to happen a lot when I was watching a lot of Valorant content. Um, what is the name of the show? Um, um, Plat Chat. Plat Chat would always play after either right after something that I watched that was Valorant related or if maybe after maybe two or three other, you know, videos that played that were other, you know, like shorter Valorant content videos. But then Plat Chat would play right after every time. Um, if I watch anything about, you know, tech or um, anything like that, um, like I'm watching like an e-bike thing. Like it, I was watching a lot of stuff about e-bikes and some other stuff. And then WAN show would play. Now they don't have anything to do with e-bikes, but I guess it's in the tech space sort of. So they, um, that will play, like it'll play after that. Then, or, or it will play one of his videos where he's building a computer. If I'm also looking at some other tech stuff or computer stuff, whatever the case may be always seems to pick some like super long video that is related to whatever you were previously watching 
and just let it play. So like you might fall asleep and then just let, and you wake up in the middle of the night and Linus is building a computer or you wake up in the middle of the night and the WAN show is on, or you wake up in the middle of the night and one of his long videos about bodybuilding or whatever comes on because that's what the algorithm is pushing. And you just finished watching some stuff about, you know, protein powder and lifting weights. And then like this guy who is getting pushed out to the algorithm pops up on your, on your channel. And then it plays that long one hour video, like maybe halfway through before you even know, and you wake up and it's on the screen and you've given him like 30 minutes of watch time. And then you're like, you wake up, you see, you're like, who is this dude? Why is this dude so ridiculously strong? Like, yo, look at this dude, right? I'm trying to get like, you know, like some, maybe, maybe that's the reaction you have. Or maybe you're like, oh, whatever. I don't want to watch this. Who is this guy? But it doesn't matter because you've already watched him for a half an hour, right? You've already given him a ton of watch time. And now YouTube thinks, oh, you like this because you didn't turn it off because you were asleep through it or whatever, right? So then it does that for so many people and you get tons of watch time and then it starts pushing it out to more people. And then some of those people like this stuff and they're like, oh, this is cool. I like this guy. I like it. I like his style. And then they click subscribe. And then like, he just keeps getting subscribers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what, that's what happens. That's what YouTube does sometimes. So I can understand why, like, sometimes it's like, that's how stuff goes viral now is like, um, you just have a large audience, a bunch of people watch your stuff, and then some people fall asleep and let the let YouTube autoplay and it autoplays similar content and then like you may pop somebody new up there, but then you've been watching this one to three to five hour video for half the night and you didn't even know it. You know, so like that's another reason why. I mean, not that people don't click on it stuff, but it gets it out to more people because of the watch time. That's what I that's my theory value out of this world is the editing so awesome that viewers just can't look away nope mm -mm. no matter which one you watch you'll find out that his videos have basically no editing there are so few cuts that it just feels like you're hanging out with a guy in his car headed to the gym and that's what youtube used to be that's what you that's what these vlogs are it's like you don't want well not everybody everybody watches different types of content everybody likes different types of things right so if he has so few cuts in his in his videos, it's like, okay, well, let me cut this part out. Or it's probably just him stringing together. It could be just stringing together a bunch of videos where it's like, I was taking a video of this. I'm like, like, do yo, uh, videotape me here. And then like, he just takes all of the clips throughout the day that he had and it just lines them up in the video editor and it just hits go. You know what I mean? Like, or maybe cuts off the ends and the beginnings or it cuts off the beginning where he turned the camera on cuts off the end whoops cuts off the end where he was getting ready to turn the camera off and then those are you know taking the ends off and then sticking the videos all together so it looks like it's edited but it's not really edited really it's just he's just stringing the videos together that could be what he's doing like i said i have no idea i'm just going based on what this guy is saying checking his progress and then heading home in theory it, honestly it sounds kind of lame so who would watch this there's a there's an audience literally for everyone. You just have to figure out how to get your content to that audience. And sometimes it it takes doing some stuff maybe that you don't want to do if you want to if you want it to go fast, but if you're consistent and you just keep posting, keep posting, keep posting the stuff that you like to post, keep talking about what you like to talk about, you're organically find your audience over a long period of time and then as you build up an audience, and then people continue to watch your stuff and people can expect that you're going to still post things. They will come looking for your stuff. They'll watch your stuff. The algorithm will help to push out to more people to find more people that like your stuff, finds a couple more people and the, and the cycle keeps going. That's what I think um, they, they want you to do. But then there's ways to hack the algorithm where it's like, oh, you've gotten all this stuff or you've gotten all these people to to subscribe to your channel and but you've done it doing something that you didn't really want to do and then you end up stopping it and then all of the all of the uh subscribers that you gained don't care about what you're posting now because 
they liked or they subscribed for the stuff that you were doing just to get subscribers. So, you know, post what you want, post what you like, post what you like to talk about, post what you like to play, post what you want, post what you want people to uh, know you for, right? And post what is enjoyable to you on YouTube. That's what I'm trying to continue to do now. Besides viewers that are in the fitness with a whole lot of patience. Yeah, those viewers do exist, but 1.8 million? I don't think so. I knew yeah. something was up, so I watched some of his videos and I noticed something. And then I read some of his comments and it validated everything I was thinking. This guy is real. Yes, that's 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 the goal to to be a real person and not have a manufactured image of yourself, right? You want to be the best you on camera, not like a fake version of you that's not really you if somebody were to meet you in real life. Now there's a difference. It's like I, I try to I try to talk to the camera when I'm talking about stuff as if I'm talking to somebody that I know, as if I'm talking to like a friend or something like that and and like we're having a conversation about something. That's how I try to come off in my videos, right? And um a lot of people will try to overdo it. Like they'll super overdo it. Like you know the people that are like, dude, in this video, we're gonna blah, blah, blah. like that will that will get people, I guess, to watch. And then some, a lot of people will be like, oh, this because of the way I guess I talk or whatever. This, oh, this guy's boring. I don't want to even talk. I've done that with a lot of people. There's a lot of people who I've watched where I'm just like, eh, come on, man. But th they might have some information that I want, so I watch them anyway. Um, but um, the fact that, like, they they talk very low and slow or something like that, it's like, uh, I don't know how much of this guy's stuff I can take. So it's it it depends. But like I said, Everybody has their audience. You just got to find your audience. And the only way to do that is to continue to post, continue to put things out, and you will find people that will come and return and and come back to watch you play games or come back to hear you talk about whatever you like to talk about um, and stuff like that. So, like, it's 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 a long grind. I, I prefer – I think I prefer the long grind grind to find the audience rather than trying to do something that I'm not going to want to do in the future because then if I'm continuing to do the same thing that I'm doing now in the future but better then those people will continue to come back because they know what I'm about you know what I mean he's just a genuine dude going about his day and I guess that's such a rare commodity on YouTube that viewers can't get enough Sure, a lot of his audience might be there for the information, but a significant portion of them are just there to relax. Just to throw the video on in the background and listen to a real person do real person things. To talk about what matters to them. And honestly, what's the conversational difference between that and listening to a friend? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're interested in what they're yep. talking about. You listen and you connect. And in that moment, you're not alone. So what makes Sam special is what makes Sam because like because like if, if he's like he's talking to it's like you're talking to a friend or whatever it's like you're going hanging out with this guy right like you say earlier you're going to hang out with this guy and you're like oh yeah man we went to the supermarket <laughs> you know what I mean it's that it's that uh what is it called I forget what it's called the uh the relationship between a viewer and the person who's posting the content I completely forgot what the what it's called because I don't be thinking about that word that often but that's what it is um and it it can be like i guess like therapy or it could be like calming for people because like maybe they don't feel like dealing with you know most other people and it's hard for them maybe to find friends or maybe they moved and they just want to they just want to watch something that that's chill and they're just like oh yeah this guy's cool I like listening to him talk about his stuff he sounds pretty happy about like stuff he's talking about like i said i've never watched the videos i'm just assuming that this is what people doing because it's like okay yeah we're going to the store and they're looking forward to see what he's doing every day because it's like oh yeah you know i was watching his video yesterday and he did this and this was funny and blah 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 blah, blah. and he's like yeah you know i like i like his style you know i like i like the way i like the way he is i like his personality he's cool and you know i wish i could have a friend like him and stuff like that right 
So then they're always looking to see what he posts next and what is he doing the next day, right? Like, that's what the vlogs are about. Like, when I used to watch Casey Neistat, I always was, like, I, I was super interested in, like, his content creation style. And I watched, like, how he did stuff. And, and, and a lot of times I was paying more attention to how his shots were and the stuff that he was talking about and the way he ordered things more than, like, what he was actually doing in the video. But, like, I was always wanting to know, well, what is he doing? This? Oh, he started posting again. I want to watch his stuff. Speaking of which, I might go back and see if, you know, watch some of his videos. Because he doesn't show up in my recommended anymore because i have been watching other stuff. But maybe I might go back and check his videos out. Anyway, like, yeah, like, that's just everybody think watches videos for different reasons. There's so many different reasons to watch videos. And, like, one of them is just to, just to hang out with somebody. Sam, he's passionate, he's amusing, he's vulgar sometimes, but the key that makes viewers so comfortable with him is that he's not he fake. turn his personality up to 11 when he's on camera. You can really feel that you'd be dealing with the exact same Sam if you saw him at the <laughs> or the grocery store. So it's no surprise that the videos that have the most views on his channel aren't the ones where he's working out. It's the videos where he's talking the most. So how does he do it? Besides the fact that he's a really cool dude. Well, it all comes down to a single strategy. Sure, his authenticity is important, but nobody would ever get the chance to know Sam without... Consistency. He uploads every single day, and his... Okay, that's that's very, very consistent. I, I don't... I'm trying to upload as much as possible, right? Like, I'll, I'll upload stuff from my stream... I'll upload stuff like when I find a video like this that I want to talk about that I feel like I can talk a lot about. I'll I'll do that. But like I think I've been posting pretty much every day so far. But I don't know. I just try to stay as consistent as possible, right? Um when I was when I was doing um TikTok stuff heavy, I was posting every day. I was posting 3 times a day cuz that's what everybody was talking about. Post 3 times a day um on on tiktok and i was like scripting out some of my stuff and then like recording it and then putting it over stuff i was doing this stuff and i was doing it all from my phone and i i think i can i can probably go back to doing it now i just have to think about what maybe i'll just you know what maybe i'll just go back to my old stuff and redo it again with new footage redo it with new footage new voiceovers but same information for the new people that are going to find me or the new people that uh, join my channel or my, my TikTok afterwards. You got me thinking about stuff in my head now about what I want to do for, for content. But let's stay on task and uh, continue to watch this video about consistency. Because what one more thing, to be consistent, you need to have a plan. And sometimes, like, I didn't want to start posting stuff again too much until I had, like, a plan about what I want to do so that I can go about doing it. I already have my YouTube plan. It's not, like, super uh, that much of a plan, but, like, it's enough of a plan for me to be consistent on YouTube right now. I need a, another plan for TikTok so that I can be consistent on both TikTok and YouTube at the same time while also being consistent in streaming on Twitch. So... I'm working on it. Community has learned that that's something that they can depend on and apparently invest some time into. For example, if you search for Sam on TikTok, only one of these is Sam. This one. <laughs> All these others are fan accounts and these fan accounts are pulling in some serious numbers. I've never seen anything like it. And neither is fan accounts. Fan accounts? Is that what we're going to call them on TikTok? I don't I don't I don't believe in fan accounts, right? I don't, I don't believe in fan accounts, uh, because no, nobody really goes from. Nobody will go from a fan account to. Maybe okay, okay, maybe I'm okay. Maybe I'm wrong. If if they find a fan account, if somebody finds or comes across a fan account and they start liking those videos. And then th that fan account continues to come up in their uh, uh, feed all the time, and they're liking the videos, and 
maybe they'll end up going to YouTube or going somewhere to find his longer videos because they might not even think that that's not his channel. They might just think that, oh, this is this guy. I'm going to go see if he has YouTube, YouTube videos, right? So then they go to YouTube and they find his channel and they subscribe, right? So that could be something that's helping out his YouTube channel because I know that, um, Asmin Gold and maybe a, maybe a couple of other people don't they didn't care whether people were posting their stream clips on YouTube under their own like under their own account right so they people would make a new account make an Asmin Gold account I think there were two people that were editor or two people that had an account that were doing that and what it was doing was they were taking his stream clips posting them on YouTube and they were making bank Right. So. He didn't care that they were doing it because he was like, whatever, he was like, if, if people are making money, um, you know, you know, sit, put my stuff on YouTube and, you know, I'm not putting anything on YouTube, then then whatever. And then also. Those accounts were the first time that I started watching Asmin Gold stuff. And then that's when I, I ended up transitioning to Twitch to go follow him on Twitch so that I could watch his streams live because I was like, I will always see him on YouTube and I was watching tons of stuff of his stuff on YouTube, but it wasn't actually his videos. It was somebody else that was uploading his videos. And then they, you know, I transitioned to watching him live on Twitch after a certain point. So I was like, it can help, but like most of the time people are not, I don't think people are out to help the the streamer or help the youtuber by using their content and just uploading it as their own content for their channel to get their stuff out there they know that that person is liked and watched a lot so that they were they're going to take their stuff and they're going to upload it and they're going to try to boost their account and maybe possibly earn money doing that i don't think there's anyone that is doing it to help the other person out if especially if they're already a large youtuber or streamer they're doing it for their own gain so that's why i'm like eh, fan accounts i don't necessarily want to call them fan accounts they're not they're not they, they're accounts that do not belong to him so like because if he doesn't care or whatever i guarantee most of those people are not doing it necessarily in good faith now, if people were uploading my stream clips or whatever um, on YouTube, I feel like that's when, you know, you've made it because people are like, oh, well, this guy, he's he gets a lot of views. But like people are not going to do that for me because they're not doing it to help people out. They're doing it because people are are, are known already. Like if if a bunch of people got together and they're like, yo, let's help this guy get seen by people and then a bunch of people started uploading my streams as clips to a ton of different channels and i only have 700 subscribers on on youtube and i only have what three or maybe like 500 590 followers on on twitch i have 8400 and something uh uh, followers on TikTok, and that number is dropping because I don't post that much, really. Like, or I don't I haven't really been posting anything. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to like make a. That's why I'm trying to make a plan for TikTok so that I can start posting again because people have been asking me, "Oh, do you play Valorant still?" And then that's why I started playing Valorant again because I was like, people are asking for it, so I'm gonna give the people what they want. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, here's YouTube because thanks to Sam, the fitness niche is exploding like never before. So we should all be taking notes because with consistency and authenticity, any creator in any niche could do the same. Okay, so cool. We'll see if it works for me. Channel that has been killing it with minimal effort on the production side, but there have always been those rare channels where the personality of minimal effort is also um, another thing that I'm trying to use to my advantage. Um, like I, I don't do things that are minimal effort because I don't want to do more. I, I, I use minimal effort in my content because I'm only one person, right? Like I'm, I'm only one person and I, there's a lot of things that I like to do. 
I like to stream. I like to make YouTube content. I like to do my uh, TikTok stuff. But it's hard to do it all at the same time, especially if you are putting a lot of effort into one thing over another. The more effort you put into one thing, the more the other things suffer. So when I was doing TikTok and I was exclusively doing TikTok, literally I was only doing TikTok because I was like, all right, well, I can make these these cool videos or whatever and I can put all this work into it. And I would it, it would take me maybe, you know, an hour, two hours maybe longer to, to edit up like three or four um, uh, videos because I would have to, you know, think of an idea, write up a script, find the clip that I want, um, go record, uh, then have to edit together, cut out certain stuff, zoom into certain parts, put uh, uh, word animations and stuff on there, and all that kind of stuff, right? And all is mostly done on my phone, right? And, um, you know, because I, I have a Note 9 and I have a stylus, so like it's it's actually it, it was cool to do, you know, on my phone um, pretty quick, fast, whatever, using CapCut. And and then I would like save them and then I would start to upload them and then I would have to go back to, you know, streaming, you know, the next day. And then after that, the, or actually I would stream and then the and then I would find the stuff that I needed. And then the next day during the during the day in the morning, I would edit up all my stuff and then. Towards the end of the day, I would take like a nap and then I'll wake up and then stream and then do the same thing again, right? And I still felt like I wasn't doing enough. Um, I felt like I was being lazy. But I was like, now that I'm doing YouTube stuff and I'm doing, and I want to do TikTok stuff and I want to stream on Twitch and I want to do all this and turn my stream content into content for other places and all that kind of stuff, I'm, I try to make plans to try to figure out how I can use lower effort stuff but not like super like the the utmost minimal effort you know what i mean i don't want to i don't want to go super super low but like um i want to make my make sure my stuff looks good um i want to make sure I'm, i i give enough value to the stuff that i'm posting um and in given you know maybe a variety of different things and just keep and just keep it up and just keep it, stay consistent with it and make sure it's things that i want to do so that i can keep Posting is also the niche, right? Well, yeah, but will it be so rare anymore? Take this guy for instance. Don't wear yourself out to the point that you're no good to anybody. That is that is a good point. Don't wear yourself out to your no because like that that is I think the reason why I use uh, another reason why I use minimal effort is because at, at some point when you're trying to do all this stuff you're going to burn yourself out and you're not going to want to do it anymore. And I never wanted to get to that point. I never wanted to get to the point where I didn't want to do it anymore. So I, I made sure to um, give stuff is enough effort for me to like put stuff out, but not so much effort that like, I felt like if I kept doing this, I would, I would just have to like stop. And then even if sometimes where I felt like I was kind of burned out a little bit, I would I would maybe you know do some lower effort content stuff, some easier stuff, some like like less edits, and then like maybe take a break. Maybe like one day I was like super tired because I didn't get enough sleep or something like that. I'm not gonna stream. I'm just like well you know I just post you know I'm I'll stream tomorrow, um or you know alter my schedule because I used to stream three days a week. The first the first two weeks I was I, I was on my schedule to stream, uh when I when I was uh doing um TikTok stuff. I was not streaming at all. I was only doing TikTok and I was only make you know posting three times a day, editing up stuff, and then I would and then I would record things instead of streaming it so that I could like record stuff and then, you know, make make content out of it or whatever. And then and then I would put that stuff on online or whatever. And I was only doing TikTok stuff. Then when I started to come back to Twitch, I had a schedule. I was like, all right, I'm a, I'm gonna stream five days a week. Two day, two weeks in a row, I did that. I was like, no, that can't, no, this can't be a thing. I, I'm tired. I'm super tired. So I, I cut it down to three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday is when I would stream, and I, and I stuck to that schedule for like a, like a year. But there were days where I was like, you know, I'm kind of tired. I'm not going to stream today. I'll stream tomorrow, and I would just like post it somewhere, like you know, post it on Twitter or post it on like, um in my stories or something like that on TikTok. And be like, yeah, no, no stream today. I'll stream tomorrow. I'm super tired. Um, 
catch y'all tomorrow or something like that, right? And um, yeah, and I still, you know, still kept up with it, and I still had viewers and stuff like that. So like, then I, you know, trailed off. The consistency trailed off a little bit, and uh, uh, and I also switched switch games and switched some other stuff because that's stuff that I wanted to do. So I still can. I feel like I can still get back there. I just have to make sure that I'm doing something like properly, but I'm still gaining, I'm gaining subscribers on, on YouTube, which is good. And, um, yeah. Including yourself. On the surface, Dry Creek Wrangler School is a channel that provides information about horses. But if you dig a little deeper, you'll find that a majority of these videos focus on something a little different. It seems that the channel began with a specific purpose, but there was a significant change when Dwayne here hit record, sat down in front of his barn, and started sharing some unedited wisdom. At that moment, viewers just couldn't get enough, and it seems that with every video where Dwayne has something to say, viewers will just pull up a chair and listen, without even a single cut to interrupt the experience. The channel has a sense of solitude and tranquility that many may never get to experience in their lives. And being fronted by a man who is so authentic and confident in his message, it really does offer something that many people are missing. Value. That's that's value. And a genuine connection. So it seems authenticity is on the rise. And even Mr. Beast, who, let's be honest, has benefited from his over-the-top content, has seen some better performance in his thumbnails by toning things down a little bit. So it kind of begs the question, is everything we've been learning about YouTube wrong? No. We no longer need cuts and edits and great thumbnails. No, I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's the case. I think it it depends on who you are and what your content is and who you're targeting, right? Like if you're targeting, I don't know, like if you're if you're being authentic, you don't have to not saying that like being over the top is bad, right? But if you're being like your authentic self, and your authentic self is not like super over the top then then your your thumbnails should match you like you should your thumbnails your content and you your personality all should match so like if you're just chilling and you're just you know talking and you're not you know there's there's nothing there's no like editing there's it's just you sitting down talking giving sharing wisdom or whatever your thumbnails don't need to be crazy. Like imagine like imagine like a thumbnail where imagine like a thumbnail where it's like a Mr. Beast thumbnail, right? When his older thumbnails like super like like wild over the top, super colorful, crazy thumbnail and then and then it's like the guy is sitting down in, you know, a tranquility, a tranquil tranquility, it's like sitting in a tranquil like open field just sharing wisdom. Right, it's like it, the thumbnail doesn't match the content. So like, you might click on the thumbnails like, yo, what is this guy? Like, why is this guy, uh, like, like this thumbnail right here? It, it's step, except for it's instead of being Linus though, it's it's uh it's the old guy talking about wisdom, but he has the same face with his hammer in his hand, and it doesn't match the personality that you're putting out when they click on the video. And if all that stuff matches. Then when you when somebody sees a thumbnail they or your thumbnail they know what to expect from like the video right? Can we all just flip on a camera and go about our day and gain millions of subscribers? <sighs> Come on, there's no right answer to this. It depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. Your subscriber count won't depend on how many cuts you have in your video. Mm -hmm. It will depend, however, on how well your viewer can connect with you and what you're passionate about. So whatever you can do True. to enhance that, that's the correct decision. Besides, if I'm like super energetic and I'm looking for a good time, you think I'm going to click on this video? There's something on YouTube for maybe, maybe, maybe like you're super energetic and you're, you're looking for a good time and you're running around partying and then you get home and then you, you go, you know, right before you go to bed, you're just like, oh, yeah, I remember this guy. You click on the guy, you listen to some some wisdom and then like you go to sleep <laughs> like you maybe so you never know every kind of viewer so i guess you have to ask yourself who is your ideal viewer who do you think i don't even i don't even i don't i don't know if i know that um some of the people that i i play valorant with i guess those people are my like ideal viewer like somebody who um 
likes uh, maybe maybe somebody who likes a lot of different types of games like they play they play maybe Valorant mainly or they play maybe shooters mainly and then they like to play other other types of games like they like to play some fighting games and on, on, on sometimes they maybe they like to play a bunch of other multiplayer games they like I don't know they just like a variety of different things I think that's the style of or viewer that is my ideal viewer um so when they go oh you know like when you're like oh I'm playing this game or I'm playing Valorant and then um you switch to a different game and they're like oh yeah I like this game this game is pretty cool I heard a lot about this game and they're and they're sitting there watching you play that game you know what I mean I think would watch you for you and what you're passionate about it took me a long time to figure that out for myself but eventually I did and this is that story it was Star a channel but I found Wait, shop. and you will too you can learn a lot about YouTube, but eventually we all have to learn the most that, valuable but... lesson. And that's just be yourself. True. True. That was a pretty good video. I'm already subscribed to vidIQ because, you know, I, I watched their stuff in the past. Um, I watched their stuff in, when uh, the other guy was the only per I guess I think he was the only person that was putting up like vidIQ videos. Um, but now they have more people uh, posting vidIQ videos on on here give it a, give it a like uh but yeah um good video um i just think that it was like the thing about him like do we need do we not need you know thumbnails or do we not need people have done that stuff before like um i forget what her i forget what her name is but there was another like a uh, large youtuber who she didn't really there was there's a couple of people i can think of that did that they just didn't, you know, they didn't have like some specific thumbnail, um, uh, uh, theme going on. They just, they just picked the thumbnail from the ones that YouTube gave them. They didn't have any words on them or anything like that, and they just picked one of the stills, and that was their thumbnail. And then when, but when your whole channel is like that, it looks correct, right? Like if you. I think that is the theme. So, like, that was another thing. I, I, something I, I think is when people come to your channel and they see what your channel looks like, that your your thumbnail theme kind of helps to um, show, I guess, like, the, that you, you know, you care about your channel and you, you're consistent with what you, you know, post and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think it's, I think it's pretty good to um, have, like, a theme. Like if you look at my channel, let's go to my channel real quick. If you look at my channel, like some of the, they're, they're now doing the for you thing. So like my, 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 um, thumbnails have evolved over time, but like this border is kind of consistent. It's a different color, but the border now is consistent. I made that decision. This doesn't have that border. Cause I just never made a thumbnail. I never made a thumbnail for this, but, um, but if you go to my videos tab, right, like this border is consistent because it's I use it as a template. So this my icon is down here in the corner and the border is around here. Usually I just plop something in there. And then like recently I've been using the same red and yellow text for pretty much every thumbnail except for this one because I use somebody else's thumbnail in the background of my thumbnail because I was reacting to that video. Um, maybe I, I'll I'll talk about how my thumbnails evolve more in in another video but that's basically what it is if you just look at you know my thumbnails and stuff like that all right that's about it for this video um before i ramble on for another half an hour all right peace